I brought everybody yesterday uh, some quotes from Trump's attack on RFK Jr., but we were able to track down the video, and we just had to play some of it for you, as there's now a spat that's been opened, RFK Jr. responding. First, let's take a listen to what Trump had to say. RFK Jr. is, as you know, the most radical left candidate in the race. He's more so than the Green Party. He's more so than even crooked Joe Biden. But he's uh, got some nice things about him. I happen to like him. Unfortunately, he is about the Green News scam because he believes in that, and uh, a lot of people don't. Uh, they want to see our country become rich and wealthy and strong and powerful and lots of other things and not waste money doing something that nobody wants and everybody knows doesn't work. I guess that would mean that RFK Jr. is going to be taking away votes from crooked Joe Biden, and he should because he's actually better than Biden. He's much better than Biden. If I were a Democrat, I'd vote for RFK Jr. every single time over Biden because he's frankly more in line with Democrats. RFK Jr.'s running mate, Nicole Shanahan, is also a very liberal person, but that's okay. She's got plenty of money from her ex-husband. Kennedy is a radical left Democrat and always will be. But he's a better man than Joe Biden, that I can tell you. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, there was a lot going on there. Nicole <laughs> Chanahan got a lot of money from her ex-husband. He's been trying to sow dissension. Ryan and I were talking about this yesterday in terms of uh, Trump endorsing the genocide Joe Chant. He's like, they're not wrong. They're not wrong. Everything for him is about calibration, trying to exploit some of this chaos inside the Democratic coalition. Go ahead. I don't really think this approach is that intelligent, though, because— Because it's transparent. Not because it's transparent, but if he actually wanted Democrats to vote for RFK Jr., he wouldn't say anything nice about him. Mm, like, yeah, the yeah, fact maybe. that Trump says something nice about you is not a point in your favor if you are at all on, like, you know, left of center or somewhere in the potential Biden voter universe. So if Trump was, I think his smartest move would be to just aggressively attack him as, you know, liberal and loves Nancy Pelosi and vote over Hillary Clinton, whatever, um, that would probably be the smarter move. Because, you know, so much of our politics, it's just vibes. It's like, which team are you on? And mm -hmm. Trump is the central figure. And it's all about just how do you feel about Donald Trump and how does Donald Trump feel about you? So if you're an enemy of Trump, regardless of where you may have positioned yourself and things that you might have said that Republicans may have at some point agreed with, you're on the wrong side of Donald Trump. That's all that matters. And conversely, for the quote-unquote anti-Trump coalition, you know, it's exactly the opposite. If Trump hates you, then we like you. So I, I'm not sure that it's his smartest play, frankly. Absolutely. I, no, I don't disagree necessarily. I just, look, I don't know if any of this is going to have an impact. It's mm. more just, it's interesting and it's funny to just see how he is trying to calibrate with respect to RFK, whether it's serious or not. Maybe it's just, you know, unfiltered what he actually thinks. But mm -hmm. here's what Kennedy had to say, and actually a pretty explosive claim. Let's go ahead and put this up there on the screen. He says, President Trump called calls me an ultra-left radical. I'm so liberal that his emissaries asked me to be his VP. I respectfully declined the offer. I am against President Trump, and President Biden can't win. Judging by his new website, it looks like President Trump knows who can actually beat him. So that is kind of interesting. new websites. Uh, yeah, I was like, okay, I'm looking into this. Uh, let's see Donald Trump. Let's go to actually the Donald Trump campaign and see what exactly what he's talking about. Uh, in terms of what I have, though, in front of me, uh, it's just a donation button. I don't see anything <laughs> about, I'll never stop fighting for you. And if, you, if you're if you able to click out of that, it just says they're not after me, they're after you. I'm just the one who's standing uh, in the way. So I don't, I'm not exactly sure what he's referring to. Maybe he's well, talking about oblique the video. reference there, RFK Jr. Regardless, he says here that he turned down the VP, at least from his emissary. That, uh, I don't know. I mean, the Trump campaign hasn't responded. They haven't denied yeah, um, that it happened. So if it, if it weren't true, you would assume that they would come out and say it. I predicted at the time that they were at least going to try just because I knew how much Trump would relish having the Kennedy name. And of course, it would have a lot of, uh, it would garner a lot of media attention and possibly could unite two of these kind of more disparate uh, groups of voters and bring them together. But the issue was always Trump has got other institutional people he's got to worry about. That's why we were talking previously. Who was it that they said would Trump would pick as his VP? And we were like, there's there's no way. Oh, Tulsi Gabbard. Tulsi. That's what it was. I was like, there's no way he's going to pick her because he's got like actual party people and donors and all these folks to please. He's got to pick somebody who's already an elected GOP person. Anybody more outside of the box is too risky. Um, and it's just, it would endanger some of the like machinery. What I've been reading right now is, 
Trump needs tons of money. He does not want to put any of his own personal money. A lot of it's already going to legal bills and all these other issues. He's relying on big, big dollar donors. And one of the things he's looking for in a VP right now is somebody who can raise tons of money from bundlers and others. That's not somebody, that's not a reason to pick RFK Jr., Tulsi Gabbard, and yeah. these other folks. The other thing I saw yeah. with his VP pick is that he is souring on any of the, like, governors from um, states that have extreme abortion policies. Yeah, well, he should. Yeah, so, like, exactly. Christy Noem, you know, right. I think they have a heartbeat bill in South Dakota, mm -hmm. D Dakota, so that's a bad fact for her in terms of, um, you know, getting the Republican VP nod, understandably, because then, you know, that becomes a center, a focus of conversation. Trump understands how bad that issue is for him, yes. so they've kind of slid down the list. With regard to this Kennedy tweet, okay, I'm probably parsing this too much, but um, there were a couple things that I found noteworthy. First of all, with regard to how he phrases the VP offer, mm -hmm. saying that his emissaries asked me, I find that credible. That's a little bit different than like, all right, the man himself right. was like, I've made my decision and right. it's you. Will right. you join me? That's more of like a trial balloon. I can imagine Trump falling in love with the idea of having a Kennedy on his, Absolutely. you know, Trump Kennedy, like, you know, he's that, he's got that old man sensibility and like mm -hmm. love of the Kennedys as this political royalty and whatever. So I can definitely imagine him toying with the idea of having RFK Jr. on the ticket and what that would mean for him and like how that would raise his esteem and so much of Trump's like modus operandi is, comes out of his own personal grievance about not being treated in the dignified way and fitting in with like the fancy people and whatever. And so if he's got a Kennedy on the ticket, like how can you deny how legit he is and his claim to political prowess? So I can definitely imagine them floating the idea, testing the waters with RFK to see if he was receptive. So that's number one. The other thing I noticed about this tweet is he says, I am against President Trump and President Biden can't win. Mm. So it's not I'm against Biden, mm -hmm. it's he can't win, which was interesting to me. I, that's almost like the Dean Phillips positioning. Yes, yeah, absolutely. I thought right? I, of actually like, true. I didn't think Well, actually, I love, I love Joe Biden, he's great, but I just don't think he can win. Or like, you know, even that's the way like Cenk Uger talked about mm -hmm. it a lot. Not, he didn't do that, I love President Biden, but he was mm -hmm. like, we have to win, President Biden can't win, so I'm the guy. Um, so I, I did find that, notable that that's the way that he chose to phrase that tweet when he certainly hasn't held his fire in terms of being directly critical of Biden. But it made me feel like because he softened that language, perhaps he does see his best lane in terms of accumulating the, you know, the most votes as being a little bit friendly towards the Biden people and like trying to pick up more of the disaffected Biden voters. But I, I also could be reading way too much into no, this no, no, no. I, I think there is something to it whenever he says, you know, President Biden can't win. That's kind of like whenever he was running in the Democratic primary. Uh, let's go ahead and put this up there on the screen. This is important for ballot access news from RFK Jr. He is ruling out a libertarian run. Kennedy says, currently facing obstacles to get on the ballot in all 50 states, getting on the libertarian ballot would have been been an easy way to short circuit this. But he says, we are not going to have problems getting on the ballot ourselves, so we are not going to be running as libertarian. This is something he confirmed to ABC News on Saturday when he was asked specifically about this. So currently, we know that he has qualified right now um, for the ballot in Utah officially. There are other states where he has enough signatures, but they're currently in con uh, being contested. But this was a move uh, of confidence on the campaign part, where they are saying definitively, we are going to be on the ballot in all 50 states. Now, I remain skeptical of that, and it's not a denigration of his campaign. It's just that I know how rigged that the process is and how difficult it will be to get on all 50. Mm -hmm. But clearly, maybe with Nicole Shanahan's money, they believe that they do actually have a very good shot at being on the ballot in the vast majority of states. That's the only reason that you would deny the Libertarian Party. Or yeah. the libertarians were like, didn't want him. Like there, there was, was some, a lot of- There was some consternation. Yeah. I'm not saying he wouldn't have won, but actually I think he might've won, I'm not sure. I don't yeah. know either, but I'm just saying that's the other alternative explanation is it became clear that at least it wouldn't be a clear cut path mm -hmm. to the libertarian nomination. They weren't gonna just anoint him. So it ends up being sort of too messy and distracting from the rest of his campaign goals. I think that's entirely possible as well. 
listen, I continue to be skeptical about how many ballots he's going to be able to get on because, you know, even in the places where he appears to have met the criteria, there remain question marks. I mean, Nevada, he appears to have met the criteria, yet there's some question about, well, did he have yeah. a VP on the ticket at that point? So does that one count? He just announced that they qualified for Iowa ballot access. They had to hold some kind of a convention in the state. Um, so they're saying, okay, well, we, we did that. We checked that box but it's still got to be certified by Iowa's Secretary of State. Are they going to find some kind of a little loophole of, oh, well, you didn't check mm -hmm. X, Y, and Z on the form 2017, and by the way, we just changed the rules anyway, so sorry, it doesn't count. There's so many tricks that they use and lawfare that they use also to try to block candidates from the ballot. I just, it's not a slam dunk thing. It's not a slam dunk thing to get on in even a majority of states, let alone all 50 states. So they certainly have their work cut out for them. And I think this is one of the most important, in terms of the horse race, I think this is one of the most important um, things to watch because we know that there's uh, oftentimes double digit support for Bobby Kennedy. So does he make it on the ballot? Who is he pulling more from? You know, who are the more disaffected voters who are migrating to him? I think these things are could all be actually determinative in terms oh, of totally who the, the next president is. And by the way, I continue to be a little agnostic about what the answer is as to which side he pulls more from, because he still does have a much higher favorability with Republicans. And so I'm just looking at that, and I can't help but think that must mean something, because it's not even close. Like, a majority of Republicans like him, and an overwhelming, like, 75% of Democrats hate him. So that has to mean something at the end of the day, is my guess. But, you know, the polling so far has been a little bit mixed as to yep. what the impact is. Absolutely. No, very true. Hey, guys, if you like that video, go to breakingpoints.com, become a premium subscriber, and help us build the best independent media organization on the planet. That's right. We're subscriber-funded. We're building something new. We want to replace these failing mainstream media organizations. So, again, to subscribe, it's breakingpoints.com.